legacy, we must be prepared. So thank you for joining in with us this evening. And uh, I am uh, with Love Felicia, also known as uh, Felicia Webster, which is my my name. But with Love Felicia is my, my, <laughs> is my artist name. And I am with my beautiful co-host tonight, Michelle Chocksclare. It does. Is there some way that we can get our viewers to see that or not? Um, is there a possibility for us to see the video live or not? Or we can just get the music? This video that we want to play? Well, for those of you out here listening, we have the amazing, the incomparable, the unparalleled, the extraordinary Dominic Morgan. Dominic Morgan is in, in the, the house. house. We're going to play this video, but we wanted to know if we could get our live audience to actually see the video. Is it possible uh, to do that? No, not right now. Okay, that's fine. We're going to play the music because actually the words are what's more important than anything. Um, the visual just gives you another element. But this, this song right here, this right here is a song of activism, a song of love, a song of truth. So And inspiration. That's right. So uh, turn whatever you got on off and tune in now, right now, with love. Come on. There are times in life when you feel like you cannot take another thing and you, you try. To make it and to carry on Every day It seems The world is changing And you just can't catch up to it Just believe And you will conquer and do anything So just rise up Stand up So you the day even when you feel like you don't have enough strength cause I promise in time the pain will pass the sun will shine so just rise up stand up and face up Sometimes people say things to try to hurt you just to tear you down, but don't lose faith. Know yourself and you will be okay. When life gets hard, giving up should never be an option to you. Stop. Head up high and carry on. Oh, so just rise up, stand up, so you can face another day. Even when you feel like you barely have enough strength, cause I
yeah, yeah. Oh, just rise up, lift your head up. Oh, oh. All right, all right, we have had Stand Up by Mr. Dominic Morgan over here. Yes. And he is in the house right now, and also joining us is the lovely, always sharp mind, body, spirit, and Dog. dress. Yes, thank you. Thank Ms. you, Paula darling. Bell. Thank you, darling. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you for being with us tonight, both of you. Well, I think uh, we need to start off since we just played that wonderful um, song that you wrote, performed. Mm -hmm. um, did you do the music for it also? That my producer, Alfonso Jones, uh, produced the track. Um, Stand Up initially came to me at a time when I was very much focused on my activism in the LGBT community. As a matter of fact, um, the funny thing is, is that um, that's how I got involved. In like 2012, Pride here in Nebraska wanted some a musician to kind of create a song to bring everyone together. And I wrote Stand Up and took them the song, this version, they hated it. They said, we need something faster, we need something quicker. So there's a, uh, like a club version of this song that Alfonso did in like 12 hours. I must mm. have a copy of Yeah, it's, 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 on, it's on the Loveaholics album that's a free download right now on SoundCloud. Um, and it's up-tempo and it's cool, but I, uh, for me, the lyrics got lost. It was, you know, it was more about the track. Mm. And um, then it sat. And then um, I was, I was like, I wanted to do um, my partner. He he was like, you know, you do great things, but I would like to see you do some things that showed your desire to That's affect right. the community. And it was great for him to challenge me in that way because at first I was like, what you talking about? And then I was just <laughs> like, you know, it's it, it's the truth. And so um, earlier this year, I was like, um, I went through a crazy um, time, and and I was like, okay, how do you come back? How do you how do you step back into this scene and say what you want to say and stand up was the perfect thing and so then we looked at concepts for the video and um i said if i can get the wordsmiths involved that would be great and and you guys came on board and then we kind of came with this concept and if you see the video we're really in this kind of open space but so much is happening in this open space and um the song is just about you know hey, if you get knocked down seven times get up eight yes. um and there and and that's what stand up uh I, that's what I want people to hear. That's I listen to stand up, you know, pretty much daily. It's one of those things where it's it, it keeps you going, and, and so that's, that's inspiring. yeah, that's 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 where it came yeah. from. Um, especially in a time where our people are just feeling constantly beat down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like how, when when do we get over? You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And it's it was kind of me saying that um, no matter where our intersectionalities lie, no matter how diverse we are, at the end of the day, I'm still black and I still stand with you. That's it. And so that was important for me to say. So yeah. Um, since we went down that road, we might as well continue on that road. Um, I would like for you to talk a little bit about some of the issues facing, um, and we're talking about intersectionality, facing LGBTQ people of color. Yes. Um, and I, I know you've been a strong advocate for change in how we treat one another and how this particular community is treated in the world. So. It's um it's this weird oxymoron of um your your when when you are a person of color identify as a LGBT I LGBT I Q I A person um in the LGBT community you really don't have a space because they don't know how to deal with culture and people of color. Um, yeah, when, when, when people in, in this day and age say a gay man, they mean someone who is 25, mm -hmm. who has a size 30 waist, who is white, who comes from some area of privilege. Um, that, that's what they see. Um, they don't see a 220-pound, 33-year-old black man, maybe bald and a little bit under his hat. Um, you know what I'm saying? You still got to go on. But that's not what it is. But I am just much that. And then the opposite side is that 
that as a person of color, you know, it's I can attend the NAACP meetings. I can go to, you know, African American Young Professional meetings, and we can talk about all these great things. But if you were to, when you bring up, well, let's, what about LGBT youth who identify as people of color? And the room goes silent, mm -hmm. you know, or it's, mm -hmm. or it's, you know, I get those behind the scenes emails about I wish I could help, but I really can't, or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So it's like, where do you fit in? Mm -hmm. Where do you go? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was the heart, that was the biggest thing. So when I created QPOC, it wasn't um, to be in spite of anything. I think pride has a great place, but everyone deserves to feel pride, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I see when you look at LGBTI individuals who are white, they, from the very young age, empower them mm -hmm. about how okay it is for them to be who they are, uh, to wear what they want to wear, this, that, and the third. They have organizations in their schools, this, that, and the third. When you look at people of color, it's very much we're gonna beat this down, we're gonna push this down. Mm -hmm. So then my job is to create leaders so that way my job is pointless in 10, 15 mm -hmm. years. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, cause we all know in Omaha, we have leaders who are leaders to be leaders and they wanna do that for the next 100 years because that's all they can say they have ever been. Okay. And they're self-appointed leaders, no shade. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to, with love, with with love. love. I don't want to be doing this in 10, 15 years. I want to be looking at young people who are intelligent, who are empowered, mm -hmm. who love themselves, mm -hmm. and who can say that I'm a black gay man, and that be okay. That they can march in the Million Man March on Saturday, and they can be in the Pride Parade on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And everybody understand that that's, those are real pieces of who you are, you know? That would be like someone asking you to choose whether you identify as a woman mm -hmm. or a black woman. And well, and they do, and, uh, and and yeah. And so yeah. That, that's often a problem. And I just remember, and I'm, I'm taking over time, but it, during the OJ trial, because I was so uh, for OJ to get off, and you know, my, my mother, who is a white woman, was like, "Well, I don't understand. He beat this woman to death, or he murdered this woman. Why aren't you on this woman's side?" I said, "For every um, black man that was hung, mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. beaten for whatever happened with a white woman." this is the first time the playing field has been level and I want him to get off for all With of them. Justice mm. has so been served. And so, yeah, it's um, choosing sides. Typically, you want to choose the side that is being the most beat down, mm -hmm. that's being the most persecuted. And in, in th this case, I don't know which one to say it is. You, it's, it, it's hard yeah. and I'll, I'll never forget when the same marriage ruling came down and I looked at my timeline of people who I've marched with and I've donated to their GoFundMe accounts and I've sat in their board meetings and people who I thought we had the same vision, we had the same desires for our community were essentially telling me that I did not matter. Mm. That, that, that I did not deserve the same rights and privileges that they had. I was okay with being a gay worker be on their committee. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Dominique, we need you to put together a fundraiser in three months with a thousand dollar budget, you know, but we don't want you getting married. Okay. We don't want y'all filing joint taxes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and, and it was shocking to me. Um, and then you, you know, you add Christianity and, and religion in there and, and, and I have a yeah. strong faith, you know, so oh. it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's just when you when you get into the layers and then you really see you ask these young people where do they go? Yeah. That's true. I, you know, I never forget last summer we were at the 50th anniversary of the African American like this huge thing, and leaders from South Omaha and North Omaha said no matter what we can always go to the churches. So then I got up there and I said, well, what about where do the gay children go because they can't go to the churches? True. Mm. So when you see them in the you see them in the streets, you see them in the jails, you see them in spaces with people who are not meaning them the best, mm -hmm. that's where they go because mm -hmm. they have nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And that's our fault. And, and we don't create safe spaces. We do not. We don't. And so you're here on the planet to make sure that there are safe safe spaces. Have to be safe spaces. Yeah. And first of all, people have to understand that there is a problem. I know that uh, frequently I hear that um, people don't want to equate the problems of the LGBT commu community with the African American community. Mm -hmm. Their struggle is not our struggle. It hasn't been the same. You can't put them on the same playing field. But the problem is death and murder and all of that is occurring. And that is pain and suffering. And you cannot equate pain and suffering. You, uh, you, ca you can't separate that. I, I'm sorry, you can't separate that. Pain and suffering is pain and suffering. And so um, I know you had some uh, statistical data at one point when we talked, it's been a while, but um, in terms of uh, deaths for transgendered people of color, um, 
and hate crimes committed against uh, the LGBT community. People need to understand that there is a problem in the first place. They just think you want to get married. They don't think there are any other problems. And so, you know, we're about edutaining. <laughs> right. You know, it's, um, I, you know, in March, there had already been eight deaths of women of color who identified as trans. Mm. And those are the ones that were reported. Mm. You know, we all, we have to think about the things that aren't reported, the things that are um, um, identified as, you know, domestic stuff or, or they were, you know, if they were using, you know, we write things off when it's convenient. And you look now where one in three trans individuals will experience some type of violence. Mm whether it's domestic, whether it's something that ends in murder, what have you. So uh, I recently joined the Domestic Violence Council um, because we're working on strategies for police officers who go to these situations because one, they're, they're not using proper pronouns. Um, they're not seeing the right people to check on them um, because they can, you know, they'll consider them both men. Well, then you're both going to get arrested. Um, just all these things that spiral out of control because they don't have the knowledge to work within these dynamics. Um, and and, and that's, that's what is, and at the end of the day, the sad thing is it just takes a little education. Mm -hmm. Like even if you don't completely like agree, there's a lot of things that I grow, I've grown through. Mm -hmm. um, that, that I still learn every day, but I have a desire to know better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, that's, and that's all it really takes. And for my people to understand persecution so much and not have a desire to understand someone else's pain at all whatsoever, mm -hmm. um, it's shocking to me, um, mm -hmm. to, say, to, to say the least. Well, I, I'm done grilling you, mm -hmm. <laughs> raking you over the coals for information. You know, I think for, <coughs> for me, I'm always like at the end of the day, um, it's about treating human beings out of the greatest good, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and we do a lot of compartmentalizing and labeling and judging, and I get it because that gives us power. But when we talk about like human beings in general, treating human beings with compassion, with love, with peace, with understanding, um, I think at the end of the day, that's what we're supposed to be doing that's while right. we're having this experience on, that's right. on Earth. Um, well, you know, you and I have had these discussions where we pe say people operate out of two, only two emotions, fear and love. Yeah, it is And just a lot fear of what we do, if we, it's something we don't understand, we fear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do we do when we're afraid? We lash out. We do very ugly things. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you said is very true. We need to do some research so we can get some understanding. And so we're not so afraid that people who are different from ourselves are not out to get us mm -hmm. or take what's ours or take something away. And they're so afraid of losing a specific lifestyle that they're not even understanding. No one's out trying to take it from you. <laughs> no one's out to take it. And another thing is, let's say that you're not a person that has the time to invest in mm -hmm. education at mm -hmm. this point. Walk out on faith. I see that thrown out a lot of the times. Love that person as a human being based mm -hmm. on the faith that First. that's how you're supposed to love that person. Mm -hmm. And if you stand on whatever belief system or values you have or whatsoever, mm -hmm. like that's the, that's, that's the foundation of, of, of most things, things that you cannot see believing in them and, 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 and going out on faith and supporting and, and building your life based on that, right? Right? So if I can't look at you and not know you from a can of paint and still hug you and say that you're my sister right. and I love you as That's a human right. being, right. regardless of whatever else is back there in your story, then what type of human am I? You, see, you, fit, you, you know what I'm saying? Point I was, that's, that's what I was going to interject just now. I know I haven't like, you know, um, presented or anything like that, but when I first heard I was going to be on this show with you, I said, oh my gosh, I love Dom. We're going to have a good time, laugh, blah, 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 hee, hee, ha, ha. But it is, it, it's, it's a, this is the divine connection here because here you are living a gay lifestyle. I was born up in a Christian household. I was told that was wrong. But a sin is a sin is a sin. I may get a lot of phone calls from this. I may get some instant messages from this. But at the end of the day, love is love. And God said to love. My sin, according to what God's word said, is no worse than yours. So I can't judge people like I love everybody. You see me at the door. I hug people. I embrace people. You know, I greet people. I want people to feel like they're welcome. You ain't, you ain't no different from me. You're no different from me. And I love because I love. And that's what God put in me was love. 
And like I said, I may get a lot of backlash from this and this and the other. I don't care. I don't care. If you want me to, if you want me to live my life according to what the word of God says, I'm gonna love and that's it. Mm. All right. That's it. Speak. Come on. That's All right. what I'm talking about. Come on. Love <laughs> is the final frontier. Yes. Come on. The, the last thing I have to say though is when you talk about intersectionality and we're talking about African Americans now, we're going on the flip side. When they there's a large segment of the population in this country that doesn't even see us as human. So when you say love human beings, first of all, they have to see us as human beings and Do not some well. species just a sub below uh, subhuman. So we have to um, look at that as well. So when we talk about fear of things and people mm -hmm. you don't understand, there are people in this country operating under the assumption that we are not quite human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. There's a whole lot of education that needs to take place. There's a whole lot of ignorance out there. And so when we're talking about um, the LGBTQ uh, community um, and people of color, when those two paths cross, not only are they looking at your lifestyle, they're looking at you as being subhuman. Mm -hmm. So there are those two uh, beasts that need to be slain. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and on, on that note, I, I need to, I'm such a Debbie Downer today. No, I don't feel like you're being a Debbie Downer. <laughs> I think that uh, we have to explore topics sometimes mm -hmm. that um, we're not, maybe the masses are not comfortable mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. But when, when it comes down to being operating from a space of love, then we have to have understanding. Yeah. That's it. And we have to see yeah. understanding yeah. to say that we are truly here on the planet to love people. Yeah. That's it. As groundbreaking as people think they are, I would defy you to find a conversation like this on Omaha Radio in the last... 50 years so no, what what, what you know what i'm saying what's happened this conversation is necessary and if it makes you feel uncomfortable it's supposed to All yeah, right now. yeah you're right sometimes right. i'm changed only when there's attack in your chair will you move come on <laughs> come on now <laughs> yes yes so. and change is uncomfortable <coughs> because we get used to doing the same thing over and mm -hmm. over again mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden there's a rock and we either have the we can trip Yep. Or we can step over that bad That's baby. Right. Come That's on. That's right. Mm. And, 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 and while stone. we're speaking on stuff, we're going to bring up uh, your recent play here, Ms. With Love Felicia. Come on. Oh, right now. It's still Domestic Violence Awareness Month. <laughs> and we're touching on all touchy subjects today. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're speaking on, uh, on that, there were some things that we discussed uh, in terms of domestic violence for transgender women. And this is... Um, going to carry over into what you discussed mm -hmm. and African-American households and how we have that foolishness what goes on in this house <coughs> stays in this house yes. and we got a lot of abuse going on in these houses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we got a lot of ugly things being said and done in these houses oh, yeah. that carry on from generation to generation because children view it they think it's normal and hurt children become hurt adults, right. damaged children become damaged adults yes, and we come carry on. this foolishness on one generation after the other. Yes, God. And mm -hmm. I know Felicia addressed that uh, in great detail in her play. <laughs> and uh, what did I just post? I'm, I'm segueing over here <laughs> to uh, <laughs> one of the participating <sighs> actresses and singers in said play, Ms. Paula Bell who did a phenomenal piece that she has done from time to time with the wordsmiths. She is one of my fellow wordsmiths whom yes. I adore. Uh, and I don't know if we can get you to do that particular piece Oh, today. okay. Is that what you have like planned on doing? Are you, I think you can do two. Mm -hmm. You want me to do that whole piece? Yeah. We would love it. You ready? Oh, uh, yes. Hold on one second. Let, yeah. me, uh, let me get you live, honey. Here we go. This piece is called Fool's Gold, and I title it that way because full gold looks like gold, looks like gold. It shimmers. You know, once you see it, you're like, oh my gosh, I hit, you know, I hit the gold mine. I'm rich now. Yeah. But when you go and weigh gold, the difference is that fool's gold does not weigh the same as real gold. Oh no. So you don't you don't have what you think you have. Mm -hmm. It's shimmered, it looked good, but at the end of the day, it's not good for you. It's worth nothing. So that's why I titled this piece, Fool's Gold. She became skilled at concealing her 
injuries, mm. masking her fears, dressing her blemishes, behind a flawless foundation, blended with ancestral pride, spiritual backdrops, and an appetite to survive. She was beautiful. Yes. Beautiful in every sense of the word, but behold, everything that glitters is not always vessels of gold at mm. ends of rainbows. Behind closed doors, she self-mutilated her soul, mm. took a strict feelings attached to heart strings, carrying devoted affections from chest to sleeves and Sometimes when teardrops turn to pouring rain and heartbeats change to chest pains, she sedated memories with 40 proof ecstasies, hoping to paralyze pain sustained from mental and physical injuries. Mm -hmm trying to cope with envies rising from jealousies arising from green eyes, window shopping through another's existence and relationships. Come on, Paula. As she measured her own relevance, questioning, would he stop beating her? Come on. If she was smarter. Would he stop berating her if she was more confident? Would he desire her more if she was prettier? She had tried everything that she could to make him happy, but maybe, just, just maybe, maybe if she closed her eyes tight enough, wished upon a star bright, enough wow. pray to god intensely enough maybe she'd be enough be enough for that ever after forsaking all others biblical type love not from her hips below but from a navel above type love she was never good at playing love's games, but she played them anyway. Mm, come on, Shooting Paula. the dice. <sighs> Crapping out. <Come> on. <sighs> Left wondering. Wondering why. Why couldn't he just leave well enough alone when she was just well enough, just being well enough Alone, his words, his words, his words, his words were like vessels of gold at ends of rainbows mm. that she cradled. Yes, come on now. In her emotions. Yeah. As he drenched her shallow esteem with compliments and pacified her bitterness with sweet. He persuaded guards to drop down around her ankles and render him the privilege of exploring the treasure she buried in the depths of her soul. He probed deep within her soul and tapped assets mm. she buried yes. in the depths of a soul. X marked the spot yes. where he made promises he had no intentions of keeping. Deep within her soul. X marked the spot where he pimped her feelings to satisfy his own needs. Deep within her soul. X marked the spot where he coerced the reluctance from her hesitance. Deep within her soul. X marked the spot Come on, Paula. where he pushed her. He used her and he pushed her. He had no good intentions for her. He pushed her into snorting more white lines of his persuasive light. Lines until she was hooked and sprung and high and believing he was king to her queen and not mm. noticing his forked tongue or on, his scales or how he 
slithers. Yes, come on now. Upon his belly and yes. his words. His words were like vessels of gold and ends of rainbows and somewhere, somewhere over, over the rainbow, she was high. She was way up high. She was high. She was way up high. She was high. She Come was on, way up high. She was bluebirds and butterflies and green grass and lies and broken promises and beatings. And she was so high. Hmm. She was high in a land that she'd heard of once in a lullaby. But there were no vessels of gold glistening at ends of this rainbow, 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 this hmm. I didn't mean to do rainbow. That. Yes. Come on. Come on now. Ooh. That was the incomparable Miss Paula Bell. Well, I have goosebumps. I do too. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> That was Thank Bubble Bumble Radio spoken word at That's its right. finest. Mm. Paula Bell, y'all. That's right. Oh, I didn't say it. For those of y'all who ain't know, that is spoken word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, come yes. on. With, come love. On. With, uh, love. with love. With love. With love. Yes. Indeed. Yes. I give all praises and honor to God. Yes. That. Come on now, right. Paula. Come now on. Now we need to know where that came from. Come on, Paula. What made you write that piece? Mm -hmm. Because I have been experiencing different situations with men and um, this one situation I went through, I was in a relationship with someone who I didn't, who lied about the marital status. Mm. And he was so good at what he did. Mm. He lied and lied and lied and I consider myself a really intelligent person, but it was so good at what he did, I didn't see, I didn't see what was going on. But once I found out what Come was on. going on, I tried to break it off and he continued to do what he was doing. So I got over that situation, I healed and everything, and I still have had men still coming up to me lying. Mm. You know, lying. trying to perpetrate, oh, sitting there. lying. Hey. He's <laughs> lying. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. You ain't got, you ain't got, to, you ain't got to lie to kick it. You ain't got to lie to kick it. You know, and. You um, ain't got to lie, Chris. You ain't got to lie. <laughs> And they would tell me different things about themselves, and they would portray themselves and send their representatives, but I didn't see the fine print. Girl, they didn't show me that. They didn't show me that. <laughs> That's the that fool's gold I was talking about. Yes. So I get caught up, wrapped up, tangled up, and then find out they really were not what they were portraying themselves to be. Mm -hmm. And that's where that poem came from. I, I needed to tell somebody what I had went through. Yeah. You know, not all my pieces are specifically about me, but that was about me that time. And probably about a lot of other women that are going through the same situation mm -hmm. that I have been through and still go through to this day. Mm -hmm. well, so I get called up tight now. It's coming from here, from, from here. No, I wrote that with my spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. You with my spirit. Come on now. And, um, you know, like I said, you, you still go through that kind of stuff and you try to weed out the, the tears, the tears from the wheat. And sometimes it's, it's harder sometimes. And we as kings and queens shouldn't be treating each other like that because no. women are still, women are guilty of the same thing. Yes. Yeah. And me, I'm so sincere and honest. I don't want nobody to feel like I felt. That's because you are a good person, Paula. There are people out here in this, in this realm who are not good people. They're not. They're, they're operating not. out of really bad spaces. Well, and, you know, <laughs> and, and, and real talk, uh, the truth is, is that, you know, we have choices. And, and this is just my input. I'm right. about to just interject right. it. We're human beings, and That's human right. beings are flawed. Because if we were perfect, we wouldn't be here on That's this planet, right. right? We wouldn't be having this experience. And so sometimes we make poor choices based on situations, mm -hmm. based on emotion, based on the loving, whatever it is. That's Sometimes right. we get caught up in um, the rapture, the rapture <laughs> that... <laughs> Wait, and there's a term that you use for that, but I don't think we can say that on yes. the radio. Yes, and, 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 and it happens to the best of us, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as... And it's always on Facebook. It's always, um, I hear it in different spaces, and I'm going to use this quote, you know, those tests become our testimony. That's right. But sometimes you got to go through that test so that you can become a testimony for somebody else. That's right. That's so right. good, bad, or indifferent, mm. 
at different points in times in all of our lives, we have made some poor choices. Yes. But those poor, poor choices have allowed us to make better choices if we choose to be better mm-hmm. in, this, in, the, in the present. Because right. some people, mm-hmm. they enjoy where they are, and it's all good. And so if that's what you choose to be, that's right. what you choose to be. I don't right. have to be there with you. Right. You know? um, and so we, we do have to get woken up. Because fools go, like you said, it looks just like gold. It glitters like gold. Um, if you look at it as a mineral, it is beautiful. Yeah. It is magnificent. It will attract your eye. It will make you feel like um, it is magical. It's elated. You know? It's, it's like you really got something. Absolutely. But, but go ahead and um, take that to the pawn shop and know that <laughs> and you won't get no money back on that. <laughs> Not a. <laughs> You're not going to get anything off that one. You can't go to Borshimes or no. <laughs> you can't. Go, you, get your, you, you get a good laugh. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's like that cute business. You might get five cents on it. You know what I mean? Girl. I got five. five. On Come, on. It. But, uh, Come on. <laughs> there you go. Get Come me on. going with, the, with, with that. Come yeah. on. Come yeah, on. Yeah, so. I do have to say I commend you for that piece. Um, a lot of times we don't want to write from here. We don't think people will understand or empathize or it's just my story and nobody else's story. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm alone in that. But you are to be commended for writing that piece because it touches the spirit of other people because there are so many other people who have experienced that. Mm -hmm. And when they look at you and they say, look at that queen. Right. She came out on the other side. Yes, she did. Give and thanks. she is stepping strong. Give and thanks. I can too. Give thanks. So that mm-hmm. that's that is truly my testimony we got to other people. people up Come in on. Here today. <laughs> we just have inspiration uh-huh. like glitter all over the place. Come on. <laughs> yes, sprinkle it. Sprinkle I mean, from stand up to fool's gold. I yes, mean, indeed. these are pieces that are necessary to affect change. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and and part of what I believe as um, artists who become activists and or who, who play along those, those same lines mm-hmm. is that it is our duty to do that kind of work. Absolutely. That, of course, um, it's not ego-based, right. but it is, it, it is uh, inspirational-based. And, 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 it's, and it's also really, it, you put yourself through it. Mm-hmm. Um, people will ask all the time, oh, you do this song about this. Um, how do you sing those songs? Um, mm-hmm. and, and really, I have to understand that I'm singing this song for someone else. Because if I let there myself focus on mm-hmm. my journey through the song, I usually will not you know, make it like, you know, I'm, I, my Christmas album is coming out in a few weeks. And the first single is about missing someone you love the most at Christmas time. Mm-hmm. It's not the average Christmas song. Mm-hmm. You know, my father died the day after Thanksgiving. My mother died three days before Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so it's about, un- it's like, how do you find joy in those times when people, it's really easy to be sad and upset mm-hmm. now how, how the heck am i gonna sing this song for the next six weeks but i know so i have so many friends who i see go through this at that time yes, right. you yes. know and and the piece that you speak about like i can feel your emotion mm-hmm. but i also know that this is you you're standing in the gap for someone in that oh, time absolutely. you know what i mean yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like absolutely. it's bigger absolutely. standing in the gap my, mom used, my, yeah. my mama and sure grandma would use that so much sure you know what i mean and that's really what we're doing yeah we're, we're, we're doing that for people who don't even have the words yet that's right. for what that journey right. looks like yes. you know what i mean and and that's the cool part about being an artist that knows your art yes that's right i think um if you don't mind me chiming in here i, I remember i ran across a meme one time that i posted that said um uh, <coughs> being an artist is about always you know putting yourself out there mm-hmm. and at the same time healing yourself mm-hmm. Right, and so say that again, please. so it, the, being an artist is yes. about putting your yourself out there, That's your right. issues, your concerns, right. your struggles, your your challenges, mm-hmm. your your tribulations out there, and at the same time through your work, you are healing That's through right the power That's of it. manifesting your pieces. That's it. And um, I know everybody doesn't do that, but this work that we do mm-hmm. is based on that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh-huh. it's about hey, I'm I'm putting my heart, soul, mind on the line, but I'm healing through this. And yes. while I'm healing through this, if I can touch one person, now then. maybe two, now then. Now three, then. four, if, I, if right. it's a good thing, mm-hmm. then somebody else can change. And they know that they have the power, the wherewithal to heal too. And that is, that's when you know the work is about the greatest good, that this work is being channeled through you so that you can touch somebody else's heart. That's right. that's I feel real passionate about gumbo. that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that yes, is that's why right. we do verbal gumbo, because we provide the platform, a safe space, a safe platform yes. for, for people to put out their work mm-hmm. in the world. And 
when we say we want people to be quiet, when I do the ho housekeeping, oh at the yes, yes. Um, when I say that we don't want all the talking, all the chatter, all the phones going off and all of that, to respect people that come up on that microphone because they're putting their heart and their soul out there. And somebody out in that audience needs to hear it. Absolutely. And that's right. So if you got all of this other going on in the background, that's disrespectful to what's being said on mm -hmm. that microphone because it's important work that's it's being done. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a game. It's not. It's not a game. So when people get up and share their life experiences, their life story, mm -hmm. their airing, their dirty laundry, whatever it is that they're doing, it's a cathartic process that yes. they're going through mm -hmm. and we will respect that. We are yes. going to respect yes. somebody. So and we, it, and it, we've set up a culture like that yes. that we don't play that. Michelle mm -hmm. pulled the belt out in a minute. Hello. And you will get checked. You notice there ain't no other security. <laughs> you will. Yeah, there ain't no other security at Verbal Gumbo. <laughs> no. She that I still can kick over <laughs> my six foot daughter's head. Trust and believe. It's so. intimacy. I, I've attended many of your events and when, it, when those stars align, the room is charred. It yes. is charged. You can feel it. It doesn't, a person can go up there and say a piece about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. They can go up there and do a piece about um, being s strong in your sexuality. Mm -hmm. and, and, and But all of those pieces will ring in some way yes. to someone. And you f and you really, you really feel it. It's it's not this kind of concept. Like, mm -hmm. it it happens. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the great thing about Verbal Gumbo and Love Down Below is that in, in a city where I don't think people really respect the culture as people of color that we really have and we've developed over the last 20 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's it's consistent and it's um it's it's open for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No mm -hmm. matter what you do, you can come to this space and whether you cook brother if, if your ministry is cooking fried chicken, baby, we got a space for you. Yes, yes we do. Come you on. Know, you understand? Right. If that's your ministry, right. you feel project. me? If if if, if, yes, if, that, if that's your thing, that's right. we encourage it. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, Michelle and Felicia will figure out okay, how how do we take what your passion is, and yes. how do we make it a, a change agent? Absolutely. And, um, Dominique, we, we just really want to thank you for that because we worked, we were in, the, 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 I think the word is intentional mm -hmm. to, to create this safe space mm -hmm. where praise, praise is the power of verbal gumball. Yes, like yes. whether you're a virgin or whether you are That's right. a professional, That's right. praise is what we do. One of my favorite songs too. Mm -hmm. But praise is what we do at Verbal Gumbo, and we do create this intimate, safe yes. space where you can be vulnerable and share your thoughts, your your, your desires, or um, whatever it is. Historical content, mm -hmm. um, uh, change agent work whatever it is we really work diligent we work diligently to create that kind of atmosphere and i think that that is why mm -hmm. it stands alone and mm -hmm. it's different from any other open mic and no no shade <coughs> as don would say with love no, uh, no shade. that when you come to verbal gumbo it's a totally different experience and with that being the case we've started to attract people who want to come in from out of town and feature at verbal oh, yeah. gumbo because oh, they've yeah. heard about it mm -hmm. and so that right there is a blessing a testimony in and of itself mm -hmm. of the work that we have done over these last we in our fifth year now mm -hmm. we, well, are in our fifth we are in year. our fifth year and so uh, that's powerful it and is because we are, we attract every ethnicity, mm -hmm. every race, mm -hmm. every gender, every gender identification, yes. every religion. Yeah. We have had every age group. We have had uh, youngsters come in. But they got to leave out before nine. Yeah. <laughs> but we've had youngsters come in, and then we've had some elders come and share, and they oh, all yeah. feel comfortable. They yes. all feel like it's a, a safe space for them to share what they have to say. Absolutely. Um. I don't think there's another open mic in this city that has the diversity that we no. have. No, 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 I don't think so. Mm -mm. And I because most open mics point. are named after the person that hosts them. Ooh. Not no 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 that's that's just that's just real. Well, like like like, like that's a great thing. It's verbal gumbo. It, it's it's about. The community. This this it's named verbal after gumbo, yeah. what is supposed to happen. It's, it's not right. you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's not yes. Rebel Gumbo with Michelle and Felicia, come on, get you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> yeah, right. it's not yeah. sold as that. You feel me? Most right. open mics in this city, which I as a singer, like I, I try to attend them, it's we sold you on this name. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It's this person's or it's this um entertainment company or, or, or what have you, which has its space, which is cool. Oh, absolutely. This is 
it sounds really cliche, but it's it's named to the community and it's you know it it feeds the community right, and right. it's mm-hmm. and that's I think that's why people buy into it because the hope and desire is that and I think Felicia and I see these like ways is if you guys left out of here tomorrow that verbal gumbo would still that that space go. would still exist. Yeah. You're trying to create Absolutely. something that will always feed the city of Omaha. That's right. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? We want precedence. one in Lincoln and we're going to have one Come shortly. Oh, so. that's right because it is, it's, it's a, growing. And it's, it's international. Growing. I don't, oh, I yeah. don't see it being a place that just needs to happen we're in Omaha, Nebraska or out. Nebraska. Come on, franchise. Like your yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Come on now. Now Except yeah. healthier. <laughs> <laughs> I live. No breakfast all day. So. I live. <laughs> well, um, I'd like to actually um, ask you a few more questions creatively, Dom, about your work, um, when did you know, like when was it clear to you that you were a singer, songwriter, um, let's go into that artistic part of your life, because we talked about your activism earlier, let's go into this artistic part of your life, this creative essence that like comes out of your pores, when did you know? Like, they came at separate times. Okay. I knew I was a songwriter, um, when I was about 21, mm-hmm. I um, I started like writing songs at like seven, but I didn't know. I I, I kind of scared myself because the melodies were coming out of nowhere, and I'm like, this isn't normal. And um, then I could only write like verses and mm-hmm. like bridges and stuff like that. And um, my father had died, um, and I had I, I just be I just I was 18 years 19 years old in prison. Um, buried my father and um, it was like January 1st mm-hmm. and I wrote 3407 like mm-hmm. I walked in my cell and I wrote this whole song through mm-hmm. which sat there for 15 14 years because I recorded wow. it last year for Love Loveaholics and mm-hmm. you know now it's you know on my album and it's you know I perform we it, love it. Yeah. yeah we do love it you know and that acoustic <laughs> version you just did oh, uh, let, let's wow. just do this shout out that, that Dom is uh nominated for three different categories if mm. I'm not mistaken what are they again Dom um album of the year best R&B artist and mm. artist of the year for the yes. Omaha Entertainment yes. Awards and he he slayed that this Friday this past Friday when we went to go um, view uh, an incredible showcase at Reverb. Again, goose pimples. Uh, all day. And that acoustic set, honey, that right there Ooh. was uh, something fierce. That's, mm-hmm. all, that's all I can say. And I need to correct you really fast. I know you made a statement when you were on that stage that you were a songwriter, you weren't the best singer, that you were, you were a songwriter. You said what now? But when you started to sing along with that acoustic guitar. Oh, my gosh. I don't ever want to hear out your mouth again that you are not a singer because you sang. Yeah, you did. Well, and, and that's the it second was part. Beautiful. That's the second part of the question is that I loved singing, but I have friends who are huge natural talents. Yeah. You know, my friend yeah. just like I, I can look at them and be like, "Baby, you sing." Yeah, yeah. you feel me? You sang. Right. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> for me, it was I liked to sing, and then I I worked and I and, and I worked at it. When I figured out I was like, okay, I am a singer, it was, I was very dependent on other people being around me when I first started performing. Mm-hmm. And Chico DeBarge came here in like 2013. And so all these people were going to do backup for me and I was going to have this band and nobody showed up. Mm-hmm. But I still had to perform. Mm-hmm. And I was frightened. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting up there, the sound went out. Mm. I had to tell some jokes all the and all, yeah, all these things, all the things and coming happen. up and coming up right behind me was, uh, was, was Johnny, um, Johnny, no good. No singer, Johnny, um, oh, uh, Johnny low, oh, yeah. who is just mm-hmm. fabulous. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. And I did my set, and people, it was right when Don't You Remember first came out, and yes. people were singing Don't You Remember with me. And I did my whole set, and I did it on my own, and it was the first one I was like, okay, this is, this is what I'm doing. Mm. This, I'm, I'm, I can stand on my own and do this, and this is a part of whatever is, is, is next for me. Mm-hmm. Well, you were amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Absolutely. Ke- shout out to Kevin Sullivan. Um, he's an Omaha guitar trio and bells and whistles. If you can get out and see that man, I, I sent him those songs and he was like, okay, this is what. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, he definitely mm. brought Dope. He just brought it to life. And, and there's <coughs> something magical that happened with just those two, um, just you two, rather. Uh, the acoustic guitar and just your voice it it was a magical experience Thank you. it was truly like oh oh my goodness you know because I know that you can layer harmonies and I know that 
Um, Icon does some fabulous tracks for you. Shout out but, to Icon. Yeah, Shout out to Icon. I, Icon most definitely. But something definitely magical happened when it was just those two simple things happening simultaneously. It was like these atoms were supposed to be together. Come on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, you thinking of doing that and inviting Kevin was the truth. I got my life. Got my yes, life. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yeah. We did yes. as well. You give us life too much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Paula, why don't we ask you the same question? And we'll just kind of, is that okay, Michelle? Oh, yeah. That we just kind of ping pong back mm-hmm. and forth. Uh, Paula, when did you know that you were a, a spoken word artist? When, when, when you were a poet, when did that resonate with your spirit? It still has it. Oh. <laughs> it still has it. Girl. <laughs> I mean, I hear people say certain things about me and my writing style and my performances. But, um, the, I mean, if my very first piece that I wrote was, what was the last year y'all was at uh, Love Jazz? Oh, yeah. yes. We remember Wait, you were sitting she on the side. Wait, let me tell this story really fast. I'm sorry. It was the Paula South Side Table. I remember. Uh, you remember? <laughs> she would come, like, <laughs> clockwork every third Thursday yeah, of the did. month to Love's Jazz and Art Center mm-hmm. for Poetry in Motion and watch every poet get up there and do what they did. And I was like, she's such a loyal uh, audience member. Yes. We just love her. <laughs> and never knew. Till one day she got we had rearranged differently. Yes, we did. Uh huh. Yeah, we had sure did. Yeah, rearranged did. the the space a little differently, and it was a little more intimate. And Miss Paula Bell got on that mic and blew everybody away. Come on. Ooh. Yes, she did. Miss Paula Bell. Ooh, I was. Like, I I just sat back and I was like, Lord, all that was sitting back at that south table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bells had been rung. <laughs> you can ring my bell. Ring my bell. My bell. I can't hit that. Ring my bell. Hey. Hey. Wait. Wait. Ring a ling a ling. Come on with, with the document. <laughs> Get in where you fit in, honey. As best I yes, can. God. <laughs> and she gives it her all. And she, she did it with that. conviction, honey. Yes, she does. Yes. Come on now. That's the key. That's the truth be told. Now then. Now then. Slam that with what? the performance if you can't slam with the voice. Ooh. Hello, Ooh. hello. Come on now. That's yes, God. But I, you know, I just, I, I mean that 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 is a. Um, I, I'm honored to be called, you know, a spoken word artist and. Like, you, you know, you, you taught me that I write epic poems. Yes, and, yes. And I didn't know what that was at first, but, I mean, everything that I write is from my heart and soul. And like you said, if I can touch even one person. Yes. Whether it be um, a funny poem, whether it's a serious piece or whatever the case is, if I can touch one person, I, I know I fulfilled my destiny. I've yes. done what God has intended for me to do as far as my writing yes. is concerned. Yes, give thanks and praise. And, I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm a totally... The reason why I started writing was to get some things off my chest to express myself. And I have a tendency to talk fast. And I don't like to be in front of a lot of people talking. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, she get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> we just did a play in front of 83 people. I know, girl. Okay. okay. But that helps me practice, stuff though. Outdoors and with hundreds. hundreds of people. I'm sorry. Paula Bell is a wordsmith and has been a wordsmith, I believe, <laughs> since 2011. Yeah, yes. but that helps, me, that helps me get over that fear, though. Well, give yeah. thanks. Yeah. I, I mean, I go to a different place. I call on, you know, the ancestors. Yes. I get, you know, y'all, y'all energy, the energy yes. from the audience. Yes. It, it just moves me. It makes yeah. me do what I do. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, she brings it that Come she on. does Come on. every time, and mm-hmm. I have to say, your voice is so powerful. It is. It definitely commands a room. Mm-hmm. And I, I do have to throw this out there: to the the play I'm working on, the the role I have for the Holy Spirit, who I firmly believe is the Holy Mother. Mm-hmm. I hear Paula's voice. Yeah, I can. I yeah, all day. The, I, I I'm hear. sorry. There's no casting call. <laughs> <laughs> Not Come on, on. come on. The Bible on. says. Mm-hmm. Come on, come it's through. Paula Bell all day. And mm-hmm. that's because it's mm-hmm. this powerful, stately, royal. It, you speak like a queen. Mm. Thank you. Come you on. Like too, right? And walk like one. Come on. Thank and you. And let me Thank just you. say this, that um, when uh, Shakur does her piece, Little Brown Girl, mm-hmm. and I look at her and look at you on that stage, I'm like, who do they have something to look up to? <laughs> Little Brown Girl. Look at because I'm not there yet. I'm working on my brown. Yes. <laughs> and that is another verbal gumbo conversation. Hello, hello. <laughs> we 
gonna, we're going to leave that one alone. Mm. Bless your I heart. Your inspiration coming on, Michelle. <laughs> That's your new piece. Yes, yes. I'm working on it. I'm, I said I'm working on my Paula Bell, the walk, yes. the talk, the walk, the talk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on my, that. my inner Paula Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Get into it. Get into it. it. Uh, <laughs> let us uh, go into another uh, question because we're, we're running low on time, and I want to get a couple questions in. And and also, it, it would be good to know what people are, where people can find you, what mm. projects you're working on currently. But I have one question that I think is really important because as artists, we all have a certain ritual that we might do to um, manifest our pieces and our work in the world. Do you have, both of you have any specific rituals that you do to bring your work to life? Is there is there a ritual, is there a routine? Um, how's that work? Um, my process of, um, I think lately has been really going in the studio fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, the songs, like even the Christmas album, like there's a couple of songs I wrote literally 20 minutes before we went into the studio ah, yes, yes. because it was about getting my head in that space and mm -hmm. hoping that it would carry over into the recording process. Mm -hmm. Um, I think live performances for me, it's about, um, why, mm. Um, I've been taking some acting classes for the, the movie I'm doing, and for me, performing is performing. And one mm -hmm. of the things she said to me was like, what is your intention in this scene? Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, what is my point of being on this stage? Because you can sing, you can do whatever anywhere, but like, what's, what's your purpose? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? And really trying to put myself in that head space, because again, I want to deliver that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how I get it out there to, 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 to the audience. Um, you know, even Friday night, my goal was to expose myself. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my purpose. You know, I was I was in tears several times yeah, that night because it was because mm -hmm. for me, you know, that it's it's hard for me. I can tell jokes and I, mm -hmm. I can talk about mm -hmm. things, but you know, to emotionally expose yourself, even in front of people that you consider great friends, right. is 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 a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what that's why I was there Friday night. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try so to think vulnerable. about is yeah, but so and that, yeah, that's yes. why why. Mm -hmm. Why, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. and, and then the only great thing is if I can't give you a really good answer, then I don't need to be doing it. Well, I know that's right. I know that's right. Yeah. What's the name of the movie that you are? Um, the movie is called Life After X. Mm -hmm. um, I play the character of Anthony. He's a singer-songwriter, and um, he's, a, he's a cool dude. I'm excited. Um, we're shooting through Christmas. Um, uh, the new single uh, for the Christmas album, Dom's Favorite Things, yes. comes out Friday. Oh, it's called um, Miss You Most at Christmas Time. Ah, yes. um, the Dom's fa the album release is December 4th okay. at the Down Under. Mm -hmm. And I'll be announcing my favorite things this week. Wow. So if you, if you have not been to a show, mm -hmm. my favorite spoken word artists and singers and um, through the city, I bring them together. Yes, and and that's my gift that. to, mm -hmm. uh, to my community is to bring all these beautiful people in one space and you can come and see them perform the show's free okay. um you know i'm gonna have me some snacks and always. the cupcake nerds and stuff always in there. because that's why i use her now because of you yes she's every <laughs> shout out to coley thank you shout out to coley yeah the cupcake um nerd. so christmas yeah. album finishing this movie and we're getting ready to tour next summer so Ooh, that's wonderful wonderful that's my focus Ooh, um before we uh, go into Paula letting us know what she's doing, how about, where can people catch you on social media sites? Um, Twitter, Instagram are all at Dom Morgan Music. Um, my website is www.dominiquemorgan.com. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook, if you uh, want to um, keep it cute, you can follow me just on my straight up Dominique Morgan. <laughs> if you, uh, you want to get a little bit more life, check out my web show, The People's Word with Dominique. Um, oh, he's, yes, a, he, he's a little different. <laughs> but he's a part of me in there. That's the other side of the Pisces. That's that's, that's the other side Wait, of the Pisces. Are we all Pisces tonight? Oh, oh my! Come on! Oh, come through! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so check those out. But yeah, my website has everything and Instagram and stuff. It's fun. I try to keep it, um, try to give you knowledge, but I try to come at it from a relatable space. That so, you yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Ms. Bell, what are you up to? <laughs> with love. Uh, with I'm, love. I'm performing with, with the wordsmiths and being a mom and, uh, you know, I mean, there's really no place to follow me, really, because I don't really 
do a lot of social media uh, but the I'm on com, and uh we are on facebook the wordsmiths so yeah y'all give me a for real oh, yes. y'all y'all pop me up <laughs> and last night paula uh supported me with is a part of my cast of mm. uh, uh, abuse is not love did y'all record I that it. um i actually wanted you to record it uh i got lots of pictures somebody asked me that too next oh, time goodness. please because that needs to be recorded yeah, i definitely I'm agree still with getting you phone calls and text messages about that oh give thanks and praises and uh so if you were there last night you had an opportunity to see Mm -hmm. paula come to life in a variety of different ways from acting Mm -hmm. to singing to the spoken word to touching the soul to my conscious it was absolutely incredible Mm -hmm. and i I thank you immensely thank you for uh being a part of that that. Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. um if somebody wanted to find you though paula like on social media site where would they go is it just paula bell on facebook just paula Paula bell that (laughs) just paula bell now there can be only one there's only one paula bell and if you can find her on facebook and also like again the wordsmiths Uh um uh the production um for domestic violence that we did and mm-hmm. i'm sure there'll be other things that she's working on um mm-hmm. uh, books and so forth and so on uh coming out soon can i because Ma- mama spoke on that That's well right. and and although i haven't a facebook paula is one of my favorite things this year yeah! so um yes. come on if if so if she's available she'll be performing at december 4th That's at what the I'm talking about. favorite, favorite yes. thing artist. she is um yes. As Definitely Nam would say, favorite. come through. Come yes. through. <laughs> she is one of my favorites. Come oh, through. Give me my praises. Give thanks and praises. Love, love, love. Yes, love, love, love. Well. That's my new stuff I've been posting on Facebook. It's something that is really touching my spirit. It's just I just love, love, love. Yes. yes. Well. It, it doesn't cause. I mean, it, it's, it's so you you it's it's difficult but it's easy mm-hmm. and once you learn how to love in appropriate ways mm-hmm. and in and in ways that people can accept it like the the thing is that we will give this huge two tons of love to someone who can only handle a pound of love mm. you know what i'm saying Just a pound. it's like it's it's give them what they can get but it's cool to give them that mm-hmm. you feel me it's like cuz i'm the two pounds of love when they only want a gram and you know but i think that <laughs> that is <laughs> um you know, when you're unconditional, you you understand That's that the Pisces in us. you're not. It is. Yeah. It is. You <coughs> are not um, waiting around mm-hmm. expecting something in return, and that's oh, conditional yeah. love. And a lot of people operate from that space where it has to be there has to be conditions Speak. before you mm-hmm. feel like you can mm-hmm. love somebody. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. whether they return it or reciprocate it or not, mm-hmm. if it you are choosing uh-huh. to operate out of the energy, right. the, the passion, the divine essence of love, mm-hmm. you just love. That's Ain't it. no more to it. Come that's on. it. Yeah, they can deposit the extra yeah. in, the, come in, on. in their that. account. That's right. Come later on. That. Because we know well, it'll come back to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, it yeah. may not oh, come yeah. from that person you gave it uh-huh. to, but it will come back to you. Right. My grandmother said, "Whatever you put out in the universe, it come back to you tenfold." It sure so does. You try to put good right. things, put it good is. things out in the universe, put love out mm-hmm. in the universe. Mm-hmm. You will get it back. Yes. Yeah, it's never necessarily from a specific person you gave it to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, if I give somebody five dollars. I'm not necessarily going to expect that five dollars back from that person, but God gonna bless me with five dollars from somewhere. Well, if it's a loan, but we Honey. have to talk about that. Oh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> with love, with love, <laughs> with love. No, but the truth is, is that <laughs> I mean that's that's real. I'm you know, but that is real too. The loan, yeah, you know, yeah. the loan is real too. However, like you said, yeah. you may not, you might not get it mm-hmm. back, but it will come back mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. You know? Amen. As long as you give it in love. Yeah, as long you as you sure give will. it in love. I'm not going to chase understand. you for my five dollars. No. <laughs> Can I tell you one more thing? Yes. I'm one of Dom's favorite things. Yes, yes you, you are, are one of Dom's favorite things. It's, it's, you yeah. know what? It's a cool, you know what? Can I just say the list real quick? Go ahead. Can I announce it here? Oh, yes. Okay. Can I do that? Can I announce my list of my favorite things? Uh, Olivia Johnson. Yes. Um, Andrew O'Donnell. Mm. Jess B. Yes. Adam. Woo. Jocelyn, Woo. Rebecca Lowry from All Young Girls and Machine Guns. Yeah, right. uh, my friend Ferris from uh, Lincoln. She just moved back from Florida. Amazing country artist. Yeah, right. um, Mula B, mm. Ali Peeler, yeah. right. Justin Carlisle, yes. Madison Ray, mm. Kevin Sullivan, mm. Kate Berrickman, 
uh, the rapper Rowdy and Miss Paula Bell. Oh, yeah. So um, yes. it's, 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 I think it's super well rounded, and these are all people who I feel like have moved me at shows or yes. I've seen them. Yes. Um, so I'm excited. Come oh out, God, come out on the so fourth. It's free. There's no reason for you not to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't and be we free. Know, we already know we're some of your favorites. <laughs> yes, 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 the one yes. Thing I know is I'm not Christmas material. Oh, you know what? No, let me tell you something, honey. You give the gift that keeps on giving. That's now that's a gift. <laughs> that is that's another show. <laughs> that but is a whole, whole, whole other show. Although I have been inclined to do Christmas carols in spoken word form. Just get don't, in, just yes. don't sing it. Get into That's it. Hidden talent. Just don't <laughs> sing it, honey. Yes, so don't, just no, no, don't. never that. Thank never that. So and she dances with it. Oh, oh um, come on. <laughs> Well, you have been listening to Verbal Gumbo on air, and yes. we have come to the close of another amazing show. Thank you so much, Paula Bell. Thank, thank you, you for inviting so me much, out. Dominic Morgan. Yes. Thank you. So thank much. you. We so I love y'all. you, and I want to thank my lovely co-host with the most, with love, Felicia, with love, whom I adore with all my Felicia. heart. Felicia, yeah. yes. hey, that's another show. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, love <laughs> down Did that below. come out wrong? <laughs> no, that was Paula. You didn't do anything. I was doing my sexy horses yeah. now. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, I was going to say. We may that. have to feature some love down below on here one time. Yes, people. I got you, honey. Get Miss Audra on here, oh, honey. Oh, 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 no, it's loud. Oh. We have to turn the lights down a little bit. Yeah. Yes, here. God. <laughs> candle lights up in here. But I am so thankful and so blessed that you all came out. Uh, yes, Thank we you. Y'all feed my spirit. You Thank you oh, yes, so it was much, great. both of you. Thank you for the work that you do in the world to affect change. Mm-hmm. You are truly mm-hmm. angels on earth doing this mm-hmm. thing. And um, we are greatly appreciative of your, your love and support of Verbal Gumbo your love and support of the community, and your love and support to be love. Y'all keep doing what y'all do. Thank yes, you. All right, God. And you are so listening much. to 1690 AM, The One, and you can also find this on MediaKingBoss.com. Mm-hmm. Indeed. We're out. We're out. Peace. Love and hair grease. Love and hair grease? Peace, love and hair grease. <coughs>